Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the greatest show on earth. I'm your co-host, Caleb Griffin. I'm your other co-host, Evan Lytle. And we got a great episode in store for you guys. We're going to talk a little bit about the Jesus Revolution movie and the Mandalorian season three. With that being said, let's jump into the theme song. Turn on a boat that we don't own. Turn on a boat. Turn on a boat that we don't own. It's Caleb and Evan and Evan and Caleb. We're on a boat and we don't own it. Turn on a boat. Turn on a boat. Turn on a boat that we don't own. All right, let's jump into the Jesus Revolution first. Um, God comes first. Yeah, God comes first always. Yep. Um, I enjoy the movie a lot more than I thought I would. Um, I was really worried with the good reviews because there's so many times in Christian media where you know a movie comes out, or you know sometimes even a song comes out, and some people are like, "Oh my gosh, this is like the best thing ever," and it really isn't. Not that it's not a good message or anything. It's just that in terms of entertainment value, it's not always there. This was a movie where the entertainment value was there, and I really enjoyed this movie, and I would watch it again, and I'd recommend it to anybody because it's it's a great story, um, just a great movie. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed it. I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know like what I was going into, um, but like the story was really good, and it was crazy because like this wasn't too long ago. Like, this, like, revolution, like, started a lot of, like, what today's Christian culture is like, with, like, yeah. Caleb and stuff, kind of, or just, like, being a little bit more open, because, like, sharing the message, which I think was, they did really good with the movie about, like, talking about that, mm-hmm. uh, and, I mean, it was very emotional for me, anyways, like, I, like, there were some times where I was, like, shedding, like, tears, was, like, dang, like, I, I didn't even know what it was, I was just sitting there in the theater, I was, like, wow. It got to me. You know, it was a really good movie, and the message is really good. Um, the soundtrack is pretty good. The music, there wasn't like a whole lot. So it was pretty good. It was just, it was very captivating, and it very much so like, like if you're like a very standard or traditional Christian, it kind of like, not necessarily challenges that, but like kind of opens you up to more like a better way if maybe I don't know necessarily better but for like some things that everyone can improve on in their Christianity yeah absolutely um I think a big thing this movie shows is that like you know God's faith is for everybody um mm-hmm. God's love is for everybody it doesn't matter you know what your background is or where you come from or what you've done uh before you knew God um it is a you know just kind of challenges that like hey just because these people are different or because you know they've done this uh they deserve you know to be in church and they deserve to understand uh the love of jesus so yeah i mean it was a great movie great message um very emotional i agree with you um on that uh my score for it on a scale from 100 was an 88 and um Comparing that to the Rotten Tomatoes critic score was a 62, and the audience score was a 99. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I I think it was a great movie, and I'll I'd recommend it to anybody. I think I definitely agree with like recommending it. Like, like even if you're not Christian, it would be probably like or like kind of look into more of that lifestyle. That'd be one of like the first things I recommend, just because it like that's the whole message is like welcoming people who aren't really used to that lifestyle and that message so it's like that's a really good starting point yeah and so like that's why i like the movie because like i could i could recommend it to like a friend or just somebody who like wants to know a bit more it's like well watch this it's not going to tell you everything but it's going to like it'll help you out a little bit and then we can like move on from there yeah absolutely and to comment on what you said about the soundtrack uh the song during the credits is Ann Wilson's song called Living Water, which mm-hmm. uh, I heard her perform at Winter Jam uh, like a few days before I went and saw Jesus Revolution. And it's a great song. 
that's a song I'd recommend to anybody too. So um yeah. Um but have you you got anything else to say about Jesus Revolution or would you like to move on to the Mandalorian? Uh I mean nothing really. Plot wise, I mean you can you kind of see it coming with like Lonnie's character. Yeah. But that broke my heart. And it was like, sad, man. He was so he was so into it and he meant it so much and then it kind of he let it dip him a little bit of like right. I'm sharing this message and that yeah that hurt. But it was like kind of a good hurt because it's like that actually happens if you're not careful. So it helps the message more. Right. And you always so, gotta keep, you know, the glory goes to God rather than you and me and Caleb kind of talked about that on Caleb AM a little bit with the Bible verse he gave us. But yeah, um it definitely it hits, man. It it was really sad. Um but yeah. So moving on to the Mandalorian season three. Um just initially, you know, the season so far doesn't seem as good as previous seasons. Um it's kind of lacking a little I don't even know what it's lacking. It's lacking something, though. For um, me, it's a bit, I can tell you that much. Yeah. In episode three, when you see, like, the little warthog guys or whatever, and they look like Muppets, I'm like, this show has a way higher budget than, like, this. But then they turn around and drop, like, a really cool dogfight scene. It's like, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, to me, I'm not even really quite sure what the plot is now. Um, I know. Now that, like, you know, uh, the Mandalorian has been redeemed for taking off his helmet, and, you know, I'm sure Bo Katan's going to try to, like, ride the beast or whatever it's called. Um, yeah. I don't know. But I think one and two were just fine episodes. I really enjoyed four, especially the flashback to um, the Order 66 and seeing a little bit of Baby Yoda's. Uh, past there and the Jar Jar Binks actor getting to be a Jedi uh, this time was really cool it, and me and Caleb were talking about this he's like it felt like I was watching a prequel movie uh, during that scene and I, and it's true and it, and it felt fun to watch um, so episode four has so far definitely been my favorite three was atrocious um, it lasted way too long yeah what was crazy is like it kind of feels like real almost like that's what a lot of people who have been who have been doing like breakdowns of like this act like this kind of stuff not necessarily trying someone's brain but like stuff like this kind of happens and so it's like yeah but I don't I'm not in any situation where like I can relate to turning right. from like an empire to a republic like yeah but yeah that episode was kind of like why are you telling us this guy's story if you're just gonna try his brain and not even like explain what the experiments were yeah and um it's uh, i just don't see the point in it and i'm sure it's going to come back into the plot some way but i mean i think it's cool to explore the new republic a little bit just because that's something we haven't seen a lot of in star wars mm -hmm. it's always been you know um the old republic and the empire and then there was the first order too but yeah, this is in between yeah empire and first order so like i do i am interested in that i like see how it went like what was going on yeah because it's, it's a time period right it's just i wish they would do something a little different to show us all of that because this was very boring yeah. and um just two characters that don't really intrigue me that much um you know it's the mandalorian not the mandalorian and friends so, you know, it was kind of like the Boba Fett episode where it was just the Mandalorian. I was kind of like, why? I, not that that episode was great. It was the best episode of the series probably. But, you know, it was like this This is not what this show is. So, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, episode three was a big letdown for me. But other than that, I've enjoyed season three so far. Um, I'm hoping that something else kind of happens that gets me excited and continues to get me excited for it um but we'll see yeah i can relate i don't know just from episode one alone it's kind of like it was good but it, was, it felt like awkward to watch sometimes like i don't know why yeah 
I think it's like visuals or something like it's just like this maybe it's because like Andor. Like Andor is such a game changer that you go back to like this, like the Mandalorian and stuff and you're just like I mean it's good. But it's not Andor. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you on that. Andor, they're just they're pretty different shows and like how the main characters are and stuff. Um and like also, also they take place in different time periods as well. Yeah. And Andor was just such a dramatic, uh, spectacular show, and The Mandalorian hasn't really had to, like that level of drama in it. It's mainly just been you know action with a very good plot and great dialogue throughout. And I don't know, we haven't really had there hasn't been too many cool action scenes this season in Mandalorian and The Mandalorian. Um, just a lot of confusion, but. I hope I think it'll get better. I trust uh, Dave Filoni and John Favreau, and there's still four yeah. episodes left in the season, so hopefully it can you know get better. I mean, halfway through already, and I'm just sitting here like, what are you gonna do in four episodes? Yeah, the trailer was so good because it made it look like they're just gonna rebuild uh, Mandalore and stuff. I was like, all right, this will be cool. And it's like, well, I'm redeemed, so I've, I've no. I have no more need for Mandalore. All right. While this song's like, well, the creature's down there, but she didn't tell anybody, so she's going to do something, I, I would think. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll find out, but... um, it's just It feels like it's starting to become one of those shows where it's like, all right, wrap it up. Because if we go, like, if we go into a season five and it's the same quality as season four, then it's just... Yeah. You're losing money and you're losing my interest. Yeah. Um, I like the aspect of seeing, you know, Grogu getting to fight, but at the yeah. same time, you know, he's got to get bigger at some point. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, and how long until that happens? I know his aging is a, is a lot different than other people, but um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, but with that, I got nothing else to say about the Mandalorian right now. Um, I don't have anything. Not really. Not that I can think of. Well, I think that about wraps it up for this episode. A pretty quick episode, but time constraints yeah, and stuff like that. Um, it is what it is. I still had fun. We got to talk about some cool stuff. Oh, yeah. And... Um, See you guys on the John next episode. We got came John Wick. Oh, yeah. John Wick 4 came out. Shazam came out. I've seen Creed 3. Have you seen Creed 3 yet? I haven't seen Creed 3 yet. That one. I haven't watched Screen 6. There's some more content to be coming Yeah. when we catch up and we get time to film. Yeah. I had never seen any of the John Wicks up until this week when Colton was like, hey, guys, we're going to see John Wick 4 this weekend, right? And I was like, I mean, I've never seen the other ones. And he he made me watch them. They're fantastic. They're fat, fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> awesome movies. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to go see. Uh, we're going to see Chapter 4 tomorrow um, at some point. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, Air comes out next weekend. Thanks. And so. yeah. Super Super Mario Brothers movie in two weeks. So yep. I've actually heard Shazam was kind of like a letdown. Really? Which is sad because like yeah, it was apparently the villains weren't very interesting and like the plot was just kind of lacking. That's what I heard. Which it does kind of suck because like these are brand new villains that have never been mentioned before. So it's like you had so much free room. And, it seems like they didn't necessarily fail, but like they didn't do as well as they probably could have. Yeah, I'll uh, still watch it. Uh, I might go watch it if if I like you know go to the movies and there's nothing out that I haven't seen already. I might watch it, but um, there's this move this year is just so crazy with the movies we're getting that you know. Movies that, like Shazam, that. yeah, 
Like movies like Shazam had Sh- Shazam came out last year. I would have gone and seen it. There wasn't a whole lot that happened last year. Uh, this year, you know, it just depends on what happens. But yeah, wraps up this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, so make sure to subscribe to Next Topic Media uh, for more content like this. I'm Caleb Griffin. I'm Lytle. And we'll see you guys in the next one.